have your Bibles, I want you to turn me to the book of Ruth. I won't be long. Um, we're going to be in the book of Ruth, uh, chapter number one. Amen. Um, amen. Glad to see everybody in the house of the Lord on the day. I won't be before you long. Um, I got a couple quick things I want to cover before we go into the book of Ruth. Amen. Um, it is, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. That a good time for Christmas. Uh, great. Uh, thank you, Lord. Beautiful cousin. Um, great time in the Lord. Amen. Uh, I, I, with the rest of uh, what I want to... I want to introduce you to somebody, amen. Um, my handsome, my brother-in-law, or my brother-in-love is in the house. He's, he's back for, um, uh, and they just moved up here. You met my sister, so I want you to meet my brother-in-law, Leon. He's, he's just, just give him a quick wave, amen. That's my brother-in-law, uh, fellow cowboy fan, amen. 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 Hey, we in the house, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Um, yeah, I just wanted to do that. Amen. Um, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Ruth chapter number one. Amen. Amen. Um, I had a dream last night. I'm going to start off with that before I even get started. And uh, in that dream, uh, I woke up to that dream. You know, it's kind of strange, but I uh, woke up to that dream. And uh, in my dream, there was a man and he was standing at a door and he kept knocking. And, uh, it was a weird dream, but he kept knocking. And every now and then he would knock, and he would come back with a different package, and he would knock. And it was weird because every time he knocked, somebody would come to the door, and they would let, make up an excuse as to why they wouldn't open it. And I, as I looked a little closer, I looked, and I saw that the man who was knocking had packages. And the packages had in it the things that the people had been praying for. But when he came and he bought the package, they had an excuse as to why he wouldn't open the door. It was the strangest dream, and I woke up from the dream, and it was a little weird. But uh, I just want to warn you that maybe some of the things you're praying for, God is sending things, knocking, trying to give you those things that you've been praying for. And they may not, because of the people, or because the things may not look like what you think it should look like, that maybe you're not answering the door. Mm. Maybe we're not answering the door to what God has had for us. And maybe we're not answering the door to what the things look like because they don't look like what we thought they would look like. And so I would wonder to tell you that while you're praying, when God answers, open the door. I don't know, maybe it may be the door of your heart. Maybe it may be the door of certain things. But while you're praying, open the door. Amen. Be willing to open up for what God has for you. Be willing to, to open the door of your heart. Be willing to open the door of your mind. Be willing to open the door of your activity. Be willing to open the door so that when God delivers the thing that he said he was going to deliver, you won't miss it because you're busy making up excuses. Maybe, maybe one of the excuses might be your, you're, you're on your cell phone. Maybe one of the excuses might be that you forgot to read your Bible. Maybe one of the excuses might be something else. Maybe one of the excuses may be that you didn't pray that particular day and ask God what it was going to look like. But in any case, when God sends that thing, make sure that you're open to receive it. Amen? Amen. Um, Amen. Incidentally, the prayer that I'm praying, and I want, I gave, a, I didn't give all the answers, I didn't have time. But if you are an intercessor, I gave you, and I'm going to get to the scripture, and I'm going to be quick. I gave you a list of things, Psalms 91, uh, not Psalms 91, Psalms 119. I want you to be praying that over the people. So if you are in this church, I want you to start reading Psalms 119 over the course of the next month. Just begin to read it and begin to meditate on it. Psalms 119. Amen. Amen. For example, it says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who keep his testimonies and seek him with their whole heart. And it goes on to give a list of things. And it says they are blessed. And so I want you to begin to read Psalms 119. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's go see what he said. Ruth chapter number one. Amen. <clears throat> it says, now it came to pass in the days, oh, if you haven't just stand, in the days when the judges ruled, that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the names of the men was Elimelech, and his wife's name was Naomi. And 
the name of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. Cool brother's name. Uh, Ephraites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab and name, the name of one was Oprah, Oprah, and the name of the other was Ruth. And they dwelled there for 10 years. And Malon and Chilion died also, <coughs> both of them, and the women was left. Her two sons and their husband, without two sons and, two, and their husband. I want to begin to pray. Father, we bless you, God. We thank you, Father. We, we honor you, God. We, we praise you, God. I pray, Father God, that you would do it exceedingly abundantly above all that you, we can ask or think. God, I pray, Father God, that your word would stand settled forever in heaven. God, we bless you. We praise you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Listen, I wanted to begin to talk to you for just a few minutes about some of the things that the Lord had put on my heart. And uh, I'll be brief because I want to get quickly to the story. But one of the things that happens is the Lord began to deal with me, even in this thing, about having your steps ordered. Mm -hmm. That your steps should be ordered by the Lord. Your steps should be ordered by the Lord. The Lord orders your steps, and the Lord has things for you to do. And it's interesting that because our steps are ordered, the Bible makes it clear that when our steps are ordered, that things begin to happen. He put it this way. He says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a, right, and, a, and, a, and a light unto my path. What winds up happening is God, and, and if you notice what I did, I did was I put some things on my feet. Because one of the things I wanted to show you is that when your steps are ordered, see what God does is God puts lamps on your feet when your steps are ordered according to his word and so that it could be a light unto your path. See, sometimes God doesn't give you enough to, 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 to see everything Amen. in a dark world. He just gives you enough light according to his word so you can take the next step. Amen. And so what we need to begin to do in 2017 is instead of looking back to the other things, what we need to do is begin to order ourselves according to God's word. And so that way his word can be a lamp unto our feet Amen. and a light unto our path. Don't, 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 don't blank me out because I look weird with this light on my feet. But one of the things I'm talking about is that when you have this lamp on your feet, the lamp of his word, and you allow yourself to follow God's word, then what happens is the path and the way that you go will begin to be lit up for you. Amen. Scripture says, for he knows the way that I take. Amen. When he's tried me, when I follow him, because many are the paths of a man, but the Lord knows them all. The Lord is able to order your steps according to his word. And when the Lord orders your steps, he moves you in the way that you should go. So sometimes we walk in paths of darkness. We wow. walk in ways that God didn't tell us to walk in. Mm -hmm. And we wonder why we don't get the results yes. that God would have us to get. It's because we're not walking in the way that he would have us to walk. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes one of the things that God wants to do is God wants us to be living in the light. Amen. 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 See, some of us want light situations, but we deal in darkness. Mm -hmm. And see, if I had some light... I, I, I would show you how, you know, sometimes we, we do something in darkness with one hand and we live in the light with the other hand and we wonder why we're not blessed. God says your steps should be ordered. And one of the things that the scripture said in Psalm 119 that I want you to begin to read, and it talks about how you should govern yourself as a people of light. How you should move in light, how you should walk in light, yeah. how you should govern yourself in light, how you should predestine yourself in light, how you should do light things, how you should do light-minded things, how you should walk in the cover of light. Amen. Amen. You can't do a business deal with dark hands. Yes. Yes. Now, if you dark skin, that's a different thing. I ain't what I'm talking about. <laughs> I ain't talking about being dark. I'm talking about you doing things underhanded and shady. Mm. God says that I want you, my people, to be governed by my word. Mm. And if my word says don't do it, then don't do it. Don't do it. If my word says do it, then you do it. Mm. If my word says go here, then you go here. If my word says don't go here, then you don't go there. Mm. If my word says walk in this way, then I walk in this way. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, as you begin to walk in the light of the Lord, Jesus. 
other people are looking for that light of the Lord. Amen. And when they walk in the light of the Lord, they'll find you. Yes. They'll find you. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes. And so what you need to do is we need to begin to order our steps according to God's word. So that way, when things happen, when stuff goes on in our lives, that's the other way that you treat your spouse. Mm -hmm. And it's found in the word. Mm -hmm. And when you walk in that way, then you get the things that it says you get. There's a way that you treat your husband. When you walk in that way, you get the things that God says you get. There's a way that we begin to govern our finances. And when we govern our finances in that way, we get the things that God says we get. Jesus. There's a way that we walk in our health. And I'll be honest with you, I ain't walking that way a lot. And when you don't, you get the things that you're supposed to get. Yeah. And when you do, you get the things that you're supposed to get. Yeah. Because God's word doesn't come back to and void. Yeah. But it will accomplish that which he sent it to do. And so my question is for you while I'm taking these lights off, is how many of us walk contrary to God's will? but expect for God to still bless us mm-hmm. according to his word. Mm-hmm. How many of us forgive according to God, according to the enemy's will, but expect for God to bless us according to his word? Mm-hmm. How many of us move in darkness and expect for God mm-hmm. to bless us in the light? Mm-hmm. You see, one of the things that we have to do is we have to begin to order our steps according to our word, and we have to begin to trust that sooner or later, God's word is going to come true. And that every man is going to be a liar. That God's word will do what he said it would do. Yes. Well, there was a man whose name was Elimelech. He thought I forgot about that. Elimelech was, by all accounts, supposed to be a godly man. Mm-hmm. But see, one of the things you got to understand is in this verse of scripture is that Elimelech, he, although he was a godly man, he was living in Bethlehem in Judah. And one of the things that Elimelech decided to do was because there was a famine in the house. And there's a famine in the house because there was a day when the judges ruled. We missed that. See, so the Bible makes it clear that when there's no king in Israel, everybody does what's right in his own eyes. Y'all better catch that. Because we're living in a day when there's no king in Israel. When there's no king in Israel, everybody does what's right in his own eyes. And when everybody does what's right in his own eyes, famine occurs as a result. And so everybody doing what's right in their own eyes, famine occurs. And then all of a sudden this man named Elimelech, he decides that he's going to leave Bethlehem and Judah and take his family. And what he does is he leaves Bethlehem and Judah. He takes his family. He says, I'm going to go to the land of Moab because it's a famine. I had a problem with that because when I looked it up, the word Bethlehem literally means the house of God full of bread and praise. I understand there's a famine, but you're going to leave the house of God of bread and praise and go to a land of uncertainty because if you know what I'm saying, the house of God of bread and praise, sooner or later, God is going to bring bread, because he's the bread of life, right. back into his house. That's right. Amen. And so Elimelech went, leaning on the arm of the flesh, mm-hmm. and he took his family with him, he did all this stuff, and he, and he went to Moab, and he went to Moab, and, and what wound up happening in Moab is when he went to Moab, Elimelech died. Mm-hmm. Crazy thing about this thing. See, because generally, wherever your flesh leads you, your flesh will leave you. I'm going to say that again. Generally, wherever your flesh leads you somewhere, your flesh will leave you there. When your lust leads you into a place, your lust will leave you in that place. So we followed our lust to a place that wasn't good for us. And we left what's good for us for a place that wasn't good for us, only to find out (coughs) that the destruction of your flesh was what was really guaranteed to you there. Mm. I'm not talking about necessarily a physical place. Mm. I'm talking about a spiritual place. Mm -hmm. I've known people, I've known pastors who got good wife, got this, got that, and they leave there falling behind the flesh. Mm. And then they lose their church, Mm -hmm. they lose their family, they lose their stuff. Mm-hmm. Some of them get locked up in jail. Why? Because they followed the flesh because the flesh felt good to them. Mm-hmm. 
rather than following the Spirit of God. And so what wound up was he left the house of God of bread and praise and went to a and went to a place of Moab where they didn't even worship the God he worshipped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when he got there, he died. A man of God dying in the flesh. And it wasn't any better because he had two sons. The name Elimelech means father and seed. But the name of, of Malon and Chilion, check this out. The name of Malon and Chilion, Malon, it, it, it means sick or wasting away. Jesus. And Chilion means completeness and nothingness. So they followed the flesh only to get sickness, only to get incompleteness, only to get perfectly wasted away. But the good thing was they took up two daughters. You see, Malon and Chilion, when they got there, they got married. And they married one daughter named Ruth. And the other one's name was Orpah. And the crazy thing was, was when Malon and Chilion got there, they eventually wound up dying. You see, because when you submit yourself to the flesh, then you get the same results that the flesh gives everybody else. Mm -hmm. There is a way that seems right in the man, but the end thereof is what? Yeah. Death. Yeah. And so what wound up happening was, as Malon and Chilion, they begin to get sick and they begin to die, then all of a sudden Naomi began to have a different testimony. Naomi said, oh my God. He says, listen. She says, I should have never left. I should have never left my praise. I should have never left the things that God had called me to leave. I should have never left the things, but my, my hope. I should have never left this. I should have never left that. And Naomi began to realize, she said, listen, she said, I got to go back to the house of God and bread and praise. Mm -hmm. She said, I got to go back to my praise. I got to go back to what made me successful. I got to go back to, see, some of us, we got successful by praising God. Mm -hmm. We got successful by following his word. I'm not talking about a place. I'm talking about a thing and a, and a, and a person. We got successful by honoring God. We got that man or that woman by doing what was right by God. Right. And then all of a sudden, when God blessed us, we put the thing over the God that blessed us with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know it's, it's I, I, I didn't plan on doing this to you on, 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 on New Year's Day, but we get the thing from God, and then we dishonor the God who gave us the gift. Mm -hmm. Only find out that it's God who gave us the gift. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's God who can make us keep the gift. Mm -hmm. It's God who knows the gift and God who knows the person he gave it to. Mm -hmm. And so when, since God knows the both and you sit there and you wonder why your blessing is rotten before your very eyes, mm -hmm. it's because we didn't honor the God who gave it to us. Yes, that's, that's good. Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he says, order my steps in your word, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Order my steps. And so what Ruth, I mean, when Naomi began to, to tell her children, Naomi says, listen, she said, look, girl, she said, listen, we came here, we were blessed, right? And she says, and now that we're here, you submitted yourself to me, we were taking care of you, now my husband died, she said, now my son's died, and now it's just me and you two girls. Naomi, Ruth, and Orpah. Mm -hmm. And she says, I got to go back to doing what I was doing mm -hmm. when God blessed me. I got to go back to my worship. Mm -hmm. I got to go back to my praise. Amen. I got to go back to seeking the voice of the Lord. Yes. Because God's voice is what I long for. Mm -hmm. God's voice is what I need to hear. Mm -hmm. God's praise is what I long for. And I got to go back to it. And she says, and I'm going to go back to it. And she says, but this is what I want you to do. She says, you know what? I'm already, I'm already done. She says, don't even waste your time with me. She says, when I go back, I don't even care if God bless me no more. I just want to go back to being where he is. Yeah. This is what she said. So you go back to your God. You go back to doing what you were doing before you met me. Thank you for serving me. Thank you for staying with me. But go back to doing what you, and, 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 you know, and the girls cry. You see, because when you first do that, they, they cry, right? And this is what they say. They says, no, we're we going to go with you. We're going to go with you. And she said, no, no, no. Go back to doing what you were supposed to do. What you were doing before. 
Go back to worshiping idolists. Go back to being in the flesh. It ain't working, so go back to doing what you were doing before. See, here's the problem I have with that. There are times in the life of every believer, I've had it, when it seems like living right doesn't work. See, I can't act like I'm phony, and I can't, and I can't, I can't do that to you. I can't not tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. There are times when you've been serving God. There are times when you've been loving God. There are times when, you, when you've been doing everything you're supposed to do, and it seems like you're sitting there and you're watching good things happen to bad people. You're watching people who don't even serve God, and it seems like blessing is knocking on their door. You're watching people who don't even honor God, and it seems like God is doing something for them. You're watching people who, who wouldn't step foot in the church, not even on CME Day, not even Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. You're watching people who wouldn't step foot in the church, and it seems like they get blessed. I'm driving. They, they driving in a Lexus. I'm a uh, Rolls Royce. I'm driving in a car. I can barely. I, I had to breathe in the tank before you even get there. <laughs> Gas wasn't good enough. I had to. Put, are, are you hear what I'm saying? And it seems like they getting blessed. Now, now, God, I didn't seen that girl before because I knew her ever since high school. And you know she a floozy, and I know she a floozy. How is it that she got a husband and I don't? Jesus. Amen. That time, but it seems like living right doesn't necessarily. But, but I, I can't tell you that if you do it long enough, and if you do what God says do, yes. and if you don't go back on your praise, and if you don't go back on your worship, sooner or later, <laughs> bread is coming back to the house of God and bread and praise. And what wound up happening was, at this point, Oprah says, you know what? I'm going to go back to the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's the choice you have to make. Mm -hmm. She says, I'm going to go back to the flesh. I'm going to go back to doing what it was I was doing before. I'm going to go back to the club. I'm going to go back to doing this. I'm going to go back to doing that. Because, you know, at, at least I made money when I was doing evil. I, I did this when I was doing sin. I did this. I did that. And she said, I'm going to go back to doing that thing that dishonors God. That's why there's no book of Orpah in the Bible. That's why there's no book of Orpah in the Bible. You see, because people who go back to doing the thing that dishonor God during times of adversity would never be honored by him. But Ruth, she said this. She said, no. She said, I want my steps ordered. And she said, and this is what she said. She said, so this is what I'm going to do. Man. She said, you ain't going to get rid of me. It ain't that easy, girlfriend. She said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go where you go. Mm -hmm. She says, I'm going to do what I see you do. Mm -hmm. She says, my steps are going to be ordered. She says, and so your God is going to be my God. Mm -hmm. And your people is going to be my people. Mm -hmm. You see, Orpah wanted the things. And when the things left, there's really no reason for her to stay. But Ruth wanted the God of the things. Ruth wanted her step for her. And she said, God, she said, Naomi, she said, no matter where you go, I'm going to be there. She said, God, you're my God. And see, and that was the prerequisite to her blessing. See, God stopped at that point becoming the God of Naomi and became the God of Ruth. What she said was, God, I want my steps ordered by you. Mm -hmm. She said, God, I want to love you. I want to seek you, God. I want to come to understand you, God. I want to know your will for my life, God. I don't care, God, what, what happened to all this other stuff, God. All I want is you. <laughs> and I believe that is where God is bringing us to this new year. See, because I, I can talk to you about all the other stuff, but after that, let me go ahead and tell you the rest of the story. Ruth wound up getting married. Mm -hmm. She wound up getting her blessing. Her husband died a little while later, but you know what? Ruth still inherited everything she owned. He owned. Mm -hmm. And on the rest of Ruth's days were lived out in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Ruth became in the lineage of Jesus Christ himself. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why was because she wanted her steps for it. I don't know about you, but at a certain point, we got to make a decision that my steps are going to be ordered by the Lord. I forgot to tell you, a living next name means God is my king. 
But sooner or later, he decided that God made his king with enough, and that's the reason why he left. But what does that say about you? When your steps might be ordered by him? When you make all of your steps ordered by the Lord? When you make all of your steps walk according to his precepts? This year, when you make God your king, when you say, God, I love you. God, I want you to do more in me this year than you've ever done in me before, God. I want my steps to be ordered by you, God. I want to <laughs> serve you, God. I don't care about the flesh, God. I don't care about the things, God. All I want is you, God. Will you trust God to take care of everything in your life? Will you trust God to take care of your business decisions? Will you trust God to take care of your medical decisions? Will you trust God to take care of the things that concern you? My question is, will you trust him? This is what she says. She says, Entreat me not to leave you or turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I'll go. And wherever you lodge, I'll lodge. In other words, wherever you rest, I'll rest. And your people shall be my people. And your God, my God. I believe God this year wants us to make him a priority in our life. I believe God this year wants us to place him above all else. You see, because that's when the blessings come. That's when the things happen for us. That's when the stuff begins to do what it said it would do. That's when the packages begin to arrive. When we begin to make God the preeminence in our life, then all these things will come. This year, I want to try something different. Stop worrying about the stuff. And stop placing our focus on the God and the stuff. Mm -hmm. Stop worrying about the things and start placing our focus on the God of the things. Let's make God number one this year. I know I'm hoarse and I ain't hooping and iron stuff and I ain't saying jumping around doing all the exciting stuff today. But but one of the things I want you to do is I want you to begin to have God order your steps according to your word. And it's only going to happen if we get in his word on this year. Mm -hmm. and that's the reason why I'm asking you to start in Psalms 119 because when you get in God's word and you begin to apply the things of God's word then those things will begin to come to you mm -hmm. but you got to do it as a love offering to God mm -hmm. I want you to stand I'm not going to be before you long